Welcome to the next video in my series that's focusing on new features that may be part of Project Loom when it's released in Java at some point. We'll be focusing today on structured concurrency. Structured concurrency occurs when a main task can be split into several concurrent subtasks that can then be executed by spawning threads. All those threads must terminate before the main task can complete. And we'll take a look and see how this gets used with structured concurrency in Project Loom. The code we're going to look at appears here in my GitHub repository in Live Lessons Loom EX2. If you go to my Live Lessons repo, which you can get here at this link at the top of the browser, and click on the Code tab, you can see the link to use in order to clone my repository. We're now in my IntelliJ project to examine the ex2.java file. I'm looking at the code in IntelliJ just because it's easier to do this. However, please note that IntelliJ doesn't yet support JDK 18, so I'll actually have to run the code and compile it on the command line. And we'll get to that after we take a look at the code itself. This particular example demonstrates Project Loom structured concurrency features, which, as I mentioned before, enables a main task to be split into several concurrent subtasks that can then run concurrently to completion before the main task can complete. Project Loom supports structured concurrency in several ways. First, it enhances the executor service to support auto-closable, and it also updates the executor's factory method utility class to define new static factory methods that support usage in a structured manner. If you want to be able to use this code, you'll need to install JDK 18 with Project Loom configured. And you can do that if you go to the jdk.java.net slash loom link. So let's go ahead and take a look at the EX2 class. The first thing we're going to do is show how a list of random numbers are going to be generated. This is called S random integers. And if you look down here, there's a call to generate random numbers, which will go ahead and create a new random number object and then it'll use its int factor method to generate a number of large random integers. You can control the number through command line parameters we'll talk about shortly. The range will be from the max value of integer minus the number of elements up to max value. So these will be very large random integers. We then convert each int into an integer and then use collect to trigger the intermediate processing and collect the results into a list. So that's what's going to be used for other parts of the code. Speaking of which, here are the other parts of the code we're going to look at. This is called demo structured concurrency. And this particular method is really the, the heart of this example. It demonstrates the project loom structured concurrency mechanisms by concurrently first checking the primality of a list of random numbers, which we just showed a moment ago, and then also at the same time computing the greatest common divisor or GCD of pairs of these random numbers. So it's going to do both those things at the same time using structured concurrency mechanisms. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is done. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a couple of local variables, prime check futures and GCD compute futures. And these are going to essentially be futures to lists of futures. And you'll see how they get used in just a moment. Then we come down and see the first major change that's added with structured concurrency in Project Loom. And this has gone through several iterations and uh, modifications, but this is what it looks like in JDK 18. What we're going to do is we're going to use a try with resources block, and we're going to use the new virtual thread executor, which is this factor method on the executor's utility class, in order to create an executor service instance whose submit method will start a virtual thread every time it's called. And if you recall from the previous discussion in an earlier video I did before this talking about virtual threads, virtual threads are intended to be very lightweight. You can spawn literally millions of them without worrying about running out of memory. So what's going to happen here is this executor object is only visible within the scope of the try with resources block, and it has an auto closable feature added in this new version of Java. And what that means is that when it goes out of scope, its close hook method will be called back. And what that will do is that will shut down and then await termination of all the threads that are spawned in the context of this scope from this open curly brace to the end of the curly brace. So think about this as essentially kind of like a co-begin feature and a co-end feature in earlier concurrent programming languages. What we then do is we use the executor that we got back from the new virtual thread executor method here, and we're going to submit various tasks. One task is going to be a check primalities task, and we'll look at that in a moment. And the other task, in parallel or concurrently, will be to submit a compute GCDs task. And as you might expect from the names, this particular task is going to check the primality of all the random integers. And then compute GCDs is going to 
go ahead and compute the GCDs of pairs of these random integers. And we'll take a look at that code in just a minute because it does interesting things as well. So thing to note here, when submit is called, it goes ahead and creates a new virtual thread. And that will then check these, this task, everything in there will run concurrently with respect to this task. The scope will not exit until all the concurrent tasks complete. And as you'll see, there's actually nesting of these structured concurrency blocks. And so we'll see that those can also be waited for by this final scope. We'll take a look at the code here that runs concurrently in a second. After all the computation is finished, however, we then come out of this block. That means everything's done. And then we're going to go ahead and use the two local variables, prime check futures and GCD compute, uh, compute futures. Both of these futures are guaranteed to be finished because we wouldn't have left that scope if they weren't. And then what we're going to do is call get on them. And that will then return what it points to. And then we'll use for each, which will go iterate through the list. And we will end up printing out all of the primality results. And once again, you can see here that this get call will not block because you wouldn't have left the block up here if it was going to block or the scope up there if it was going to block. And then down here, we're going to print out all the GCD results. And again, same thing, the get call here will not block because we wouldn't have exited that scope if the computations were still running. So that's just how we're going to print the results. Now let's come up here and take a look at check primalities and see how that's implemented. So here's check primalities. You can see it takes a list of integers, which we generated randomly, and it's going to have its own nested uh, scope. It's going to have its own new virtual thread executor scope, just like we saw before, except this is now nested inside the outer one. And that's perfectly fine. And we're going to go ahead and make a new executor here, which is going to be used to spawn virtual threads. And then we're going to run the computations here. And this is kind of interesting. What we're going to do is we're going to take the integers that we got, and we're going to turn them into a stream. And then we're going to use the map method. This map, of course, is map on Java sequential streams. And we're going to check the primality of each number in this stream of integers concurrently. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to call a helper method called check primality, passing in the prime candidate, the number that might be prime, and the executor that we got from here. And then what we're going to get back from that, of course, is going to be a uh, stream of prime result future futures to prime results as we'll see in a moment and then we're going to collect those things into a list but first let's take a look at check primality so here's check primality as you can see it takes the prime candidate and the executor service that we had from that inner nested block and it uses the executor to submit the task the next task to do the computations here again keep in mind that submit on a virtual thread executor will actually spawn a virtual thread there's no sense in pooling these things because virtual threads are intended to be very lightweight. So we submit this. It's going to go ahead and check to see if the number's prime. This is just a simple brute force algorithm designed to burn CPU cycles. And we get the results back. We display the results. And then we create something called a prime result, which will hold the results. So we take the prime candidate, which is what we passed in. We get the result back from calling is prime, which is either zero if it's a prime number or the smallest factor if it's not a prime number. We wrap that up in a prime result, which is just a good old Java record. And then we return that as the result. So we get a future to a prime result because that's what submit returns, futures. That will then end up coming through map. So we'll end up with a stream of futures to prime results, which we collect into a list. And that's what gets returned from check primalities. So let's kind of uh, bounce out of here a little bit. And then let's go take a look at what happens with compute GCDs. So keep in mind that all the check primality stuff is all running concurrently using the structured concurrency mechanism in a nested way. And likewise, compute GCDs is going to do much the same thing. So it again will also have this structured concurrency block where we make ourselves a new executor service instance, which you call executor, which is going to be a new virtual thread executor. And this time we're going to do something a little bit more interesting. We're going to use the stream support dot stream factor method to take the list of integers and convert it into a sequential stream of two element integer objects. These are basically adjacent pairs in this big list. And then those adjacent pairs are going to be passed to the compute GCD method. So you can see compute GCD takes this pair of integer objects and the executor. And if you go take a look at compute GCD, you can see what it does is it takes that integer array pair 
and it goes ahead and calls the GCD method, which basically just does a recursive implementation of Euclid's algorithm. I won't go into detail because I'm sure you know what GCD is. And we then compute GCD on the first element and then the second element in that two element integer array. That gets a result. And then we create a new GCD result, which is also a Java record, which has the original two integers and then the result. And as you can see, that comes back as a future to a GCD result because submit returns a future. Even though submit actually is starting a virtual thread, it's returning a future to that result. So again, we kind of pop back off the stack here, and you can see that we'll end up with a stream of futures to GCD results, which we then collect into a list. And so we give back a list of future to GCD results. You'll notice, by the way, that I'm kind of combining the Java streams-like model with structured concurrency. Nothing wrong with that, works perfectly well. I just like streams, but I'm trying to demonstrate how you can use this with structured concurrency mechanisms. So again, that's how all these things get kicked off and everything's going to run concurrently in different threads. And we're about to run the program in a moment and you'll see that there's different threads created for all the different tasks that we're running here. So now we're in a terminal window on my computer and I'm first going to go ahead and compile the program using the Java C compiler from JDK 18. You can see everything compiles just fine. And then let's go ahead and run. We're going to give it an n of 10. So that's going to end up generating 10 random integers. And here's the results. So you can see a couple things. First, when we started to run this program and we were submitting all those various tasks, you can see that each task ends up basically running in a different thread. So they're not reusing any of these threads. They're just being spawned and they're running. And you can see there's a nice mixture of things here that are doing the primality checking, which is this type of print as well as the GCD checking, which is this stuff. And you can see it's all nicely interweave, interwoven, demonstrating how everything is actually running concurrently in these various virtual threads on my eight core hyper-threaded MacBook Pro. So lots of concurrencies taking place here, as you can see. The final results are printed out in the main thread. That's thread one. And as you can see here, these are the results we get. These are the results from checking whether things are prime. So this is each of the prime candidates and whether they're prime and what their smallest factor is. If they're not prime, nothing here was prime. Everything had a smallest factor. And then down here, you can see the results from the GCD uh, computations. And there we took pairwise versions of these things and computed the GCD. And you can see there, there wasn't much in common for a lot of this stuff, but for the final pair that we did, it had a GCD of three. So hopefully you've enjoyed this discussion and illustration of how you can use structured concurrency mechanisms that are now in Project Loom. Hopefully at some point, something along these lines will be integrated into mainstream Java in the future. And uh, once that happens, we'll have a lot of fun using this stuff in practice as opposed to having to kind of kludge it together with a mixture of IntelliJ for editing and command line for compiling and running the program.